What's up, everybody? Makajeski here, back again with the team at Osmo, talking some college basketball DFS ahead of Wednesday, March the 9th. Some of the bigger conference tournaments are starting, and we are getting some larger slates. And today, we have an 11 gamer. We also have a five gamer in the morning, so make sure to check out our tools for that. Before we get started, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you today by Monkey Knife Fight, and they have a phenomenal offer for those of you new to the platform. What you're going to do is head over to Monkey Knife Fight, use the promo code PLUS, and you are going to get up to a $100 match deposit bonus in two free months of Osmo Plus. Again, that is promo code PLUS, P-L-U-S. And getting into this, here are the tools we have behind the glass. This is our data sheet. A lot to get into, so we'll dive right into it with some of these teams. First and foremost, we have Mississippi, Ole Miss, taking on Missouri. Ole Miss is a three-point favorite here. 131 total, so this is not one of the better game environments overall. We've seen a changing of the guard a little bit for Ole Miss. They've messed up their rotations quite a bit. Nicer Brooks will play a lot in the front court here. And Missouri doesn't have the best defense, so this is something we could maybe exploit. But overall, totals in this game really low. If I'm playing anyone on Ole Miss, it's probably Jamin Brakefield, whose price has dropped down to 3,600 despite playing 31 and 35 minutes in the last two games. More of a peripheral player, 25% rebound rate, 12% assist rate. But Brakefield's going to be on the floor. Decent amount, it looks like. Like Jarko Joyner, Luis Rodriguez, Matt Morrell. They just haven't seen consistent minutes. Austin Crowley played 32 minutes in the last game, but 17 and 11, the two prior. So probably staying away from Ole Miss for the most part, outside of maybe a cheap break field. Missouri's hurt a little bit. They haven't had some of their ancillary players for a while now, but there are a couple of players we know will see the floor the entire game. And it's Javon Pickett first and foremost. He has a massive shot rate and assist rate, 6,700, but just a pitiful game environment for him. I think you can maybe get to pick it as a GPP option. And then Kobe Brown, he's really expensive, and he's basically gone back to the old Kobe Brown we knew and loved last year that would foul out of games in 14 minutes. If he doesn't foul, he'll play 30 minutes or more, but there's just no guarantee with his really tough foul rate right now. Second game we have is Nebraska taking on Northwestern. A 144 total, so decent here. Four and a half point spread. Nebraska upset Wisconsin in their last game. Despite the absence of their best player, Bryce McGowans, he's going to play here. Hand injury. Their coach has already said he's going to be out there. So expect 30 plus minutes from him. Expect 30 plus minutes from Trey McGowans. Alonzo Verge is typically a little shy of 30, but after his positive performance against the Badgers, maybe you see him more. And then we have Derek Walker in the front. He should see some usage now that Bryce should is, is back in the lineup. So it's tough to get to any of these players. I think it's maybe just GPP Bryce or GPP Trey and move on. Northwestern, two blowouts in their most recent games. They also had the flu bug down the stretch for this, this team. And we saw that affect a lot of players like Boo Booey, six minutes in their most second most recent game. Robbie Barron, eight. The list goes on. But ultimately, the thing with this North, Northwestern team is they're going to play 10 to 11 guys. And the only players that have 30-minute upside are Pete Nance, Boo Booey, and Chase Audige. None of them are particularly good values here. The team total is solid. Northwestern paces teams up, and they play poor defense. So maybe a GPP, Boo Booey, or Pete Nance, but I think we can find better plays than this game environment. West Virginia, Kansas State, a decent game environment overall, 139 total. Kansas State, the one-point favorite. I bet Kansas State already getting Marquise Knoll back, which is a big addition to their team. West Virginia plays another rotation roulette type style only Taz Sharman and Sean McNeil have consistent minutes thought Malik Curry was in for an elevated role down the stretch here after 28 29 minutes in the last two games but he ultimately plays 22 in their most recent game so Huggy is continuing to mess with their rotations for me it's a stay away spot entirely with Taz you have the enormous shot rate and a decent assist rate nothing else so if he's hitting the threes he's hitting the shots he could get you a tournament winning ceiling those games are few and far between Sean McNeil's cheap, but the price is still volatile for his minutes. Going to Kansas State, I do think you can get to some of these pieces. Now, Marquise Noel returns, and that should extend the minutes for this rotation a little bit. We basically saw them playing five guys with Nigel Pack, Mark Smith, Mark McGuire, Ismail Masood, and Selton Miguel. The cheapest player with consistent minutes here is Masood. He's really the only guy with size in this lineup, and he's played 33, 35, and 27 minutes 
in their last three games. Not the most used player, but he's 3,600. So there's pretty decent value here with Masood. Otherwise, I'm probably just trying to play Mike McGarrow or Nigel Pack. I think both are decent GPP plays. McGarrow probably sees his minutes stripped a little bit with Noel back in the lineup. But ultimately, Masood is probably the best value play we have for this Kansas State team. Clemson taking on VT. Saw Clemson yesterday. Strong win for them. And they are a team that's gotten healthier down the stretch here. Again, spreads aren't out for these games, these teams that played yesterday. But my, my model projects spread. So this is based on my model. I had Virginia Tech minus four, 135 and a half total. Not the best game environment for either team here. Clemson, PJ Hall is their alpha when he's healthy. He was hurt down the stretch. He's now played 32 and 14 minutes in back-to-back -back games. Almost fouled out of both. But we saw the ceiling for Hall yesterday. He's the team's usage leader. And I think he's the player you want to prioritize if you're playing any of them. Outside of that, it's probably going down to play a guy like Chase Hunter or Hunter Tyson. But ultimately, the rotation is so wide for Clemson. It's kind of just P.J. Hall and move on in this poor game environment overall. Both teams play slow. And Virginia Tech, 64.4 possessions per game. Just horrifically slow for this team. VT, we know what they're going to do. They're going to try to shoot threes. If they hit them, they might win. If they do not hit them, they lose. And we've already seen them lose to Clemson recently. Rotations extended a little bit. In the front court, you're going to see Aluma. You're going to see Mutz. Both are expensive. Prefer Aluma if you can if you can get him. Just the ceiling's a little higher with his shot rate. But Mutz is more of a peripheral player. I think that gives you a solid floor. There's a ceiling with Mutz as well. But prefer Aluma if you can get there. For the guards, Hunter Couture and Naheem Aleen play 30-plus minutes. Not really the same ceiling that you see with Aluma and Mutz, but neither are particularly used either. I think you, you want to get to Couture if possible, but 6900 is pretty egregious price for him in a team total below 70 points. And then their last player, Storm Murphy, has kind of been benched. You're going to see a rotation between Maddox, Murphy, Padula, and Gesson, not targeting any of these guys. It's probably just a stay-away spot with VT. To Paul St. John's, this is an awesome game environment, the best one on the slate. 153 total. St. John's a five-point favorite. DePaul has really been surging now that they're healthy. And you have Javon Freeman Liberty at 9,700. The dude has a 31% shot rate last three, 20% rebound rate, 23% assist rate. He's somebody you want to prioritize getting to if you can. He is extremely expensive, but there are the value plays, some of which we already talked about to jam him with ease. Brandon, Brandon Johnson, he's viable at 5,900. David Jones is also extremely used. He's above 24% shot rate, rebound rate, and assist rate. So nice consolation for Freeman Liberty if you can't get there. And even Jalen Terry, somebody I think you can buy low on after foul trouble has caused him issues in the last three games. Only 22 minutes in the last game, but 39 in the game prior. So I think Jalen Terry is an interesting tournament play. But ultimately, I'm trying to get to either Liberty or David Jones. On St. John's, they have an enormous 79 team total. Champagny is a player who's also extremely involved, but you look at the rates just comparatively between Freeman Liberty and Champagny. I'm trying to find the 300 to get up to Freeman Liberty over Champagny, but if you absolutely cannot, I think he's a fine consolation. Pasha Alexander is a guy in the mid 8Ks that I have a lot of interest in. The rates are increasing. We saw Posh banged up for a few games down the stretch, but he has since returned to play 36, 33, and 32 minutes with increasing usage. So Posh is interesting. Aaron Wheeler in the front court has pretty solid rates, but he's 6,700 and the minutes just aren't consistent. So do you want to pay 6,700 for a guy that could play just 24 minutes? In my opinion, I would rather just try to target some other spots on the slate. So just like it sounds, it's the studs for these two teams. It's Freeman Liberty, Jones, Posh Alexander, Julian Champagny, and maybe a Brandon Johnson or a Jalen Terry for DePaul. Georgia taking on Vanderbilt, another game here with a pretty wide spread, nine points in favor of Vandy, 144.5 total, which is solid. For Georgia, we basically know the three main players that are going to see the ball. It's Braylon Bridget, it's Cairo Oquendo, and it's Aaron Cook. Now, the usage between them has been kind of split all season, a little volatile back and forth, but Oquendo has the 25% shot rate, decent rebound rate for him. Bridges is a little more consistent across the statistical categories. 19.5% shot rate, 18.5% rebound rate. Shot and assist rate dependent. So I think Bridges is the best play here for these guys. They don't, Vanderbilt, that is, doesn't play phenomenal defense inside historically. They are getting back some pretty decent players in the paint. So that is a concern. But 
Georgia, their implied team total is low. I think if you're taking a shot, it's just tournaments. Vandy's very interesting here. Now, this is the healthiest Vandy is going to be all year. So I bet them minus nine in this game. They're returning Rodney Chapman and Jermaine Mann. What does that do to the rotation? I think it hurts guys like Tyron Lawrence, like Shane Dizani, some, some of those players. Not so much Trey Thomas, not so much Pippen. We know Pippen's locked into his role. And I don't think it really hurts Rod, excuse me, Liam Robbins or Miles Stute, the guys in the front court. Pippen in particular is extremely expensive. I'd rather play Freeman Liberty. But a guy in Liam Robbins is somebody we've been targeting a lot. Fouls have been a major problem for him, but the usage is incredible when he's on the floor. It's just we don't have the elite 20% rates across the board last three because he only managed 12 and 15 minutes in two of the last three games because of fouls. So I still like buying low on Robbins. Again, I don't think he's affected by Mann and Chapman returning. They don't play the same position. So he's my favorite play for Vandy and a solid value play that allows you to get some of the studs. Minnesota taking on Penn State, one of the weakest game environments overall, so no need to spend much time. 125 total. Penn State's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. The thing with Minnesota is they play a hyper-condensed minute rotation between Peyton Willis, Jamison Battle, Elijah Stevenson, Luke Lowe, and kind of Eric Curry who's coming back from injury. I think if you play any of them, it's it's probably Elijah Stevens just because of the – when you're factoring in price, his usage stands out the most. But Battle and Willis have great usage just – there's not a lot of upside for this game. For Penn State, John Herrer has the immense rebound rate, but he does almost nothing else. So there's a little bit of double-double equity. Jalen Pickett plays every minute, strong rates across the board. But again, total so low, I don't think you want to really get to these guys outside of large, large field tournaments. Cal Washington State, another game that has a horrific total, 125 and a half, eight-point spread in favor of Washington State. Cal is a team that's an X-out spot for me, large rotation. Really poor total, very low upside for all these players. Usage is spread, just a stay away spot. For Washington State, they're a team that's battled injury a lot this year. They've wildly underperformed some of their, their usage rates and their efficiency metrics. You can see top 100 in both offensive and defensive efficiency. So seeing their, their actual record at the end of the day is a bit surprising. And they don't play a consistent rotation like Andre Jokomovsky, 21 minutes of 5 to 32. I don't know what to make of that. Michael Flowers at AK is just flat out too expensive. I think if you want to play anybody, Muhammad Gay is somebody that could make some sense, but he battles foul issues so often. And with such a wild minute rotation, I'm not sure you want to get there. If I'm playing anybody, it's probably Flowers. And again, AK is just way too expensive for him in this game. Louisville take it on Virginia. So Louisville played yesterday. Projected spread from me, not what Vegas put out. So this is my model. Five points in favor of Virginia, 126 and a half total. We saw Louisville kind of condense their rotation. And again, you always have to be concerned. Does this remain constant moving forward? Again, Malik Williams has been suspended. He's played three minutes, but he's played 34 in back-to-back -back games. And he's their best player. So if you're buying low on anybody, Malik Williams makes sense, but the total in this game is so low that there's just not a lot of upside with anyone on this Louisville team. Sidney Curry has been a monster when he's on the floor, but we saw the minutes drop in their last game from 33, 34 down to 25, but his rates are incredible when he's out there. Outside of that, it's probably a Noah Locke or a Jared West. They're the two guards that played the most slight preference towards Locke, just better peripherals than West, but not a great game environment. Virginia. Not the team I really want to target ever. Minutes are pretty consistent. Jalen Gardner has solid rates across the board, over 20% shot rate and rebound rates. A lot of double-double equity there. Kihei Clark always projects well because he plays every single minute and shoots the ball a ton. Pretty good assist rate. But again, he's typically a guy I'm trying to avoid on larger slates because the upside is always capped by their overall total. I like Kihei more in small slates, but we have so many alternatives here. I'm not sure you need to get to him. Statman is somebody interesting in the very, very – Minimum price range, 3,200. He's played 29 and 31 minutes back-to-back. -back, and there hasn't been a ton of foul issues ahead of him. So maybe a 3,200 statman, but don't, don't love that. There's plenty of value today. Georgetown Seton Hall. Pretty good game environment, 144.5 total. Georgetown plays tight minutes for the most part. They are 10-point underdogs, so be a little wary here. Aminu Muhammad has phenomenal rates, but he just is inefficient. Now, he's up at 8K, so I don't think there's as much reason to play Aminu. I would rather just play like Posh or some of the other guys in this range. But maybe for a GPP, he's extremely used. Donald Carey is a pretty good usage rate as well. 
He fouled out of their last game in 29 minutes, so don't worry about the limited minutes there. He'll play nearly every minute when he's when he's out there. And then from there, it's, you know, Kid and Rice and GPPs. Colin Holloway play a lot in the front court, but it's a very difficult matchup against a strong interior for Seton Hall. Going to Seton Hall, this is a spot I have a lot of interest in because of the immense implied team total. You're also getting discounts on some of these guys after really poor usage throughout the year. But the two guys in particular that I think there should be a lot of interest in are, are Jared Roden, number one. He's a 26.5% shot rate. And then just like injuries are condensing this team so much that it's kind of difficult what to make of them. Bryce Aiken's still out. Kadari, he's a guy that they have been, quote, hopeful to get back, but he's dealing with a thumb injury. So that's not good for your primary ball handler. If Kadari's healthy, he's still cheap enough where he's at a pretty strong price point, but the health is a major concern for Kadari. Overall, I, I think I'm still comfortable getting to him, but man. This is a, a risky proposition here. If Kadari's out, I think it opens up a lot of usage for a guy like Jameer Harris, who's 3,400. Again, this is not an early game, so you need to be willing to make some pretty gross pivots if this is the route you take. If you play Jameer Harris and you have like Kadari in the lineup, you might end up with like a Trey Jackson or a Tyree Samuel pivot with mid 20s and minutes. I think that's okay on this slate. You're betting on upside, but man, pretty risky spot. And to close this out, we have Utah taking on Washington, 141 total. Washington, the one-point favorite. Money coming in on the Utah side. Decent game environment, pretty wild rotation for Utah. We know Braden Carlson is going to play nearly every minute when he's healthy. He's been banged up a lot this year, but in competitive games, he'll see 30 minutes. 22% shot rate, 14% rebound rate, which is a little low for him. I actually think he's a pretty good tournament play in this spot. Just a cheap price, mid mid price point for him is, I think, completely fine to get to. Marco Anthony is somebody you could also look to. The 22 minutes are concerning in the last game. I think I'd rather just play Carlson, but overall, I don't love the deep rotation for this Utah team. It's kind of Carlson or move on. For Washington, they play extremely fast, and they play really bad defense, which opens them to overs in a lot of spots, but they play a tight rotation. Terrell Brown, Emmett Matthews, they'll play almost every single minute. Nate Roberts, when he's not fouling. Dejon Davis returned from injury to get 27 minutes. And Jamal Bay. Outside of Terrell Brown, none of these guys are particularly expensive. So I think you can take some shots in this range. I'm particularly interested in Jamal Bay recently because he's played at least 37 minutes in three straight games. He has a 21.5% shot rate and 13.5% rebound rate. Just a little bit better than some of the other players on this team. I will note Nate Roberts has a 42% rebound rate in his last three games. But again, Nate Roberts, he's like the Kobe Brown of this Washington team. He's great when he's in the floor but he fouls so frequently that he could end up playing 20 minutes for you. So I think Bay gives you a little more security. Even Dejon Davis coming back from injury should play 30 plus here. A little more security with those players. But that is the DFS slate. We'll continue these breakdowns throughout the week. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite plays are. Otherwise, we will see you again next time. I am Matt Gajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. Thank you guys for watching.